Good morning, I'm Trevor Alt. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Wednesday. Number one, President Trump is sending mixed messages on some big issues. He now says the current background checks on gun owners are sufficient, even though he previously called for tighter checks. Meanwhile, he's abruptly canceled his upcoming trip to Denmark after being told that Greenland is not for sale. He previously said buying the island was not the primary purpose of this trip. Number two, authorities say they've stopped another mass shooting plot, this time in Florida. Police arrested a 15-year-old for allegedly threatening to bring his father's M15 to his high school and kill at least seven people. He was arrested in front of his mother, who was pleading with police not to arrest him. Police say he made that threat in an online gaming chat room. On to number three now. We're now hearing from the pilot of a small plane that crashed into the waters off northern California. You see that plane going down near the Half Moon Bay Airport. A pilot said there was no time to be scared. Yeah, he and his passenger floated for about 45 minutes before getting rescued. That crash is being blamed on fuel problems. Number four now, new lawsuits have been filed against the estate of accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. One of the three lawsuits claims that Epstein abused girls while he was on work release from jail. He also allegedly forced a victim to marry one of his associates who recruited girls for him. And finally, number five, a controversial horse race. It appeared that the number eight horse in the back there beat the number two horse by a nose at this race in the UK. But take a closer look. It's a little confusing until yeah. you see this image. Race officials had to change their call after realizing that it was the horse in front that actually okay. won. Alrighty, let's get you right to today's big story. Several new arrests in connection with alleged mass shooting plots across the country. One of these cases involves a teenager who was taken into custody right in front of his mother, and she was pleading with officers not to arrest her son. I'm telling you right now, this is not my son. This morning, a new crackdown in the wake of those mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton, this time in Florida. Police body cam video showing a 15-year-old being arrested in front of his mother after allegedly threatening to shoot up his school. I, Dalton Barnhart, vow to bring my father's M15 to school and kill seven people. His words reported to the FBI who alerted local police, his mother pleading with officers as they arrived to arrest him. Is a fifth would anything wrong? Yes, he's 15, but he's still a little boy, and he's not one of the crazy people out there doing stuff. A written threat is a second-degree felony in Florida. As the FBI warns of a rise in domestic terrorism and possible copycat crimes after the attacks in Texas and Ohio, a string of new arrests have been reported. In Indianapolis, this truck driver's under arrest, accused of planning to attack a church in Memphis, allegedly writing, I was thinking about shooting a church up, but I'm afraid how it will affect my family in the flesh after I'm gone. In Seattle, 35-year-old Eric Lynn is accused of threatening a woman on Facebook and writing that he would kill all Hispanics in Miami and other places. And in New Jersey, after police say a 57-year-old man crashed his van, they say they found weapons and ammunition and later found an arsenal of other weapons in his home, including a grenade launcher and neo-Nazi paraphernalia. He now faces weapons and drug charges. No word what, if any, plot was uncovered. Some experts believe mass shootings can be contagious. Others say this uptick in arrests could simply be the result of more people calling police when they see concerning behavior. Well, now to President Trump sending mixed messages this morning on three big issues. First, there's guns. Uh, right. ABC News has now confirmed the president is backing away from his call for gun background checks after speaking with the head of the NRA. And meanwhile, on the issue of taxes, he's now contradicting his own staff and confirming that he is considering a payroll tax cut. And then there's the issue of buying Greenland. The president has abruptly canceled his upcoming trip to Denmark, which owns Greenland, after a Danish official called Trump's discussion of a sale of Absurd. ABC Serena Marshall is sorting through all these developments. Serena, good morning. Janae, Trevor, good morning. It is so hard to pin down where exactly the president stands on these issues because he's not just contradicting his staff anymore, but himself. It was a day of he said, he said, the president versus himself on guns, taxes, and Greenland. Backing off any new background checks push, again calling mental health the actual problem. We have very, very strong background checks right now. You know, they call it the slippery slope. And all of a sudden, everything gets taken away. We're not going to let that happen. 
The position change comes after a lengthy conversation with the head of the NRA, the president telling him he does not support universal background checks. Following the recent mass shootings, he had tweeted both sides needed to come together and get strong background checks. But it's the same type of flip we saw from him after the Parkland shooting, where he first told Republicans you're afraid of the NRA. before later backing away from some of the bipartisan talks. The about face comes the same day. Aides insisted a payroll tax was not on the table. Is a payroll this economic tax expansion? being considered? Uh, it's not being considered at this time. Just hours later. Payroll tax is something that we think about and a lot of people would like to see that. Meanwhile, the president telling founding NATO member Denmark, no thanks when it comes to a planned meeting because Greenland isn't for sale. Even after White House officials downplayed the seriousness of any Greenland purchase. And just Sunday, the president said when it comes to the purpose of his visit to that purchase. It's not number one on the burner, I can tell you that. And canceling that visit to Denmark, the president also canceled a state visit with their country's queen. And when it comes to guns, sources tell us that the administration is still having background conversations on background checks with lawmakers on Capitol Hill, but that his re-election campaign committee is also concerned any bills could impact his base. Trevor, Janae. All right, Serena, thank you for joining us this morning. And sticking with the White House, the White yeah. House is expected to announce a new plan today when it comes to detaining migrant families at the border. Under current rules, migrant families with children can be held no longer than 20 days, but the White House is expected to announce a plan that would make that time period longer. Any new policy is likely to be challenged in court. The president has blamed that 20-day limit for encouraging migrants to travel with children so they can be released earlier. A scandal involving racial and gender discrimination and sexual harassment has cost the Philadelphia's police commissioner his job. Richard Ross Jr. stepped down yesterday, and this move came as he and the department and face a federal lawsuit. Charges include that Ross didn't respond to sexual harassment complaints from a female officer with whom he allegedly had an affair. In Florida, families and friends of two missing firefighters came together to pray last night as the search for those men enters day five. Brian McClooney and Justin Walker went fishing off Port Canaveral last week. Hundreds of volunteers are searching an area that's about the size of Connecticut. Boaters have covered nearly 70,000 square miles. They have found a fishing tackle bag and part of a cooler that belongs to the men, but no other sign of them so far. The complicated case of a Pennsylvania man freed after 22 years behind bars returns to court today. Scott Gadeski walked out of a Pittsburgh courthouse yesterday. He's been in prison since 1997 for his role in a murder the year before. On Monday, a jury found him not guilty during a retrial thanks to a co-defendant's testimony. Gadeski was grateful to be set free. It's just shocking. I didn't see that coming. Usually they send you back and 23 years over to, that's all I can really say. I got my attorney, my federal attorneys, everybody thanks for this. Without them, what would have happened? So Gadeski is back in court this morning because the state parole board wants him held for a parole violation stemming from a 1990 conviction. Now to a consumer alert, a new study finds that washing raw chicken and other poultry actually increases the risk for getting sick. Officials say the federal government study reveal how easily bacteria can spread when surfaces are not effectively cleaned and sanitized. Ooh, well, raw chicken might have been the meal of choice for one potential airline passenger in Newark, New Jersey. TSA agents recovered this 15-inch black snake at a checkout point Monday. A passenger saw it on the floor at Newark Liberty Airport, and an agent covered it with one of the checkout bins. TSA says it will not be making attempts to find the snake's owner. Two former Major League Baseball players are charged with being part of a drug trafficking and money laundering ring in their native Dominican Republic. Luis Castillo and Octavio D Dotel are among 18 people linked to the network. Dotel is in custody. Police are still searching for Castillo. He used his Instagram account to deny any drug involvement. Well, World Championship dreams are still alive for a group of Little League ball players from New Jersey. So the kids from Elizabeth and the team from Barrington, Rhode Island, were locked in a scoreless tie heading into the final inning of last night's elimination game. And then Jersey scored two runs on what started as a ground out to second base. So New Jersey moves on with a 2-0 win. Rhode Island heads home after its second loss. Well, good luck. Good luck to Jersey, yeah. our deepest Sincerest apologies to Rhode Island. Absolutely. They fought hard. Coming up, the emergency declared ahead of a gathering near Area 51. Officials are now bracing for an invasion, but not by aliens. 
We have more after this. Oh, welcome back. We're going to head now to Area 51 in Nevada and the new emergency that's been declared amid fears of an invasion next month. So it's not aliens, but people that have authorities worried after a man called for believers to gather at the site on a fact-finding mission. Here's ABC's Will Reeve. Nevada officials are bracing for an invasion at Area 51 by humans. The military base 80 miles from Las Vegas has become infamous for conspiracy theories about little green men. And the coup de gras. Area 51. Home to an alien prisoner in Independence Day. Welcome to Earth. And countless encounters with the X-Files Agent Mulder. It's so all our questions, the proof that we suspected but never been able to hold in our hands. That that proof is here. Crowds are all but guaranteed to arrive around Area 51 next month, spooking local authorities. In fact, so many are expected to descend upon rural Lincoln County, Nevada, that officials voted to pre-sign a state of emergency declaration guaranteeing funds for more medical and law enforcement resources. This all ahead of the event called Storm Area 51, They Can't Stop Us All. The event's creator, who says it all started as a Facebook joke, even was visited recently by the FBI. They were they were super cool. They really just wanted to make sure I wasn't like some kind of actual terrorist that's making pipe bombs. The single event has now spiraled into a weekend long alien enthusiast festival. It's insane. I just created a joke while I was playing video games, man, and it's taken off to this like absolutely wild monster. Now his wild monster has morphed into a vision for a different invasion. Up to 50,000 festival goers descending on the otherworldly tourism hotspot of Rachel, Nevada. Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Our thanks to Will Reeve there. And now to the disputed territory of Kashmir, which has been on lockdown since India revoked its autonomy and imposed a curfew and a communications block blackout on August 5th and now some officials within the police force are saying they've arrested more than 2,300 people in an effort to curb unrest. So we want to go across the pond to Julia McFarland in our London Bureau for more. Julia, good morning. What's going on there with the protesters? Morning, Trevor. Exactly. So as you say, 2,300 people uh, have been uh, detained in the f in the Indian administered region of Kashmir. That's according to um, three officials speaking anonymously to the Reuters news agency. Uh, allegedly that the, the number of those detained include anti-Indian protesters as well as pro-Indian Kashmiri leaders. Now, there's been unrest in recent weeks since the Indian government stripped Indian uh, 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 controlled Kashmir of its special autonomous status. Uh, that a controversial move uh, last year. Kashmir is sort of split between uh, the Pakistani controlled side and the Indian con controlled side. Um, but the Indian side enjoyed uh, a certain level of, of, uh, of autonomy. And so this controversial move sparked a number of protests. Uh, the security forces, uh, the Indian security forces, they uh, issued a, a large crackdown. Cell networks were down. People did not have access to any communications. Indian families Families struggled to get hold of their relatives and friends in Kashmir. Really, really worrying time there. And Julia, now to Italy, where migrants rescued from the Mediterranean by an aid ship have finally been allowed to dock after a 19 day standoff. Some of them jumped from the ship in an attempt to swim to shore. <coughs> Yeah, Janae, this has happened several times uh, in recent months with several different ships. Um, it is an ongoing issue. The most, re most recently, this is a Spanish ship called the Open Arms. Uh, Italy refused to let it dock whilst it had dozens of migrants on board. And so for three weeks, it's sort of been floating off the Italian coast. Uh, the owners of the ship and the captain, they said that uh, the migrants were suicidal, really severe conditions on board. People were feeling sick uh, just to just two toilets uh, shared by everyone on board. The migrants were sleeping cheek to jowl. Um, and, you know, this comes after a few months ago when a German ship uh, tried to do the same and the, the whole crew and the captain were detained um, for bringing those migrants on board. But this has sparked a real, uh, this is an ongoing issue for Italy because, as they say, they take in an, a disproportionate number of migrants. Right, an ordeal in its own right. And then also, Julia, this is happening as mm -hmm. Italy's premier has announced his resignation. When can we expect new elections there? 
Exactly. So the current makeup of the Italian government is there is a power sharing coalition between two populist parties uh, and an independent prime minister. Now, uh, the, le the leader of uh, the Liga party, the firebrand uh, um, uh, Matteo Salvini, he tabled a no confidence vote against Prime Minister uh, Giuseppe Conte. He then resigned, said that he couldn't work with them. And if there is uh, and if, and if uh, uh, Salvini is unable to form a new government. We could see elections in Italy in the fall. Now, those two parties made huge gains in the recent European elections. Now, that's for the European Parliament, not the Italian Parliament. But it indicates that the Liga and the Five Star Movement, both uh, populist anti-immigrant parties, they both got a huge share of the vote. So they're feeling pretty spunky. And uh, Giuseppe Conte said that Salvini's actions were all politics because he wants to see another election. Julia McFarland, always keeping us informed from across the pond. Julia, thanks for making time for us. Thanks, guys. Let's get a check of our notifications. Starting with a love story for the modern age. A man dubbed Mr. Tinder for his prolific matches on the dating app has finally found love in real life. Model Stefan Pierre had more than 14,000 okay, matches. Sure. Trevor um, is not impressed. No, I don't, think, I, I don't think the guy was looking for love. I no. think he was trying to get his numbers up. Uh, he did it. 14,000 matches. He succeeded. Matches. Yeah. That was his goal. At least now he's found love, though. Mm -hmm. So good luck. A tip to of him. our cap to you, mm -hmm. Stephen Pierre. Next, we hope you've already had your breakfast this morning because you are about to hear the magic words that are likely to make you hungry. Here Ready? they are juicy. Okay. Melting. Crispy. Nice. Succulent. And number one, tender. Oh. And then when it comes to how you cook it, there's other words, too. Barbecued is up there, as is smoked. And marinated and grilled and roasted is number one. I'm surprised by that. I am surprised by that too, and none of those words that make don't me do it for hungry. you. No, but that's our question of the day. Yeah. What words that are on the list or aren't on the list make you hungry? Sure. Tell us in the comments. Tweet us at ABC News Live. What you got what's anything a word that was that left off? Hungry? Sauteed. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, Mark, the floor director, okay. likes that we one. We brought him in. Mark's hungry now. I don't. Bagel. Uh, how about uh, Cap'n Crunch? How about just Cap'n? Cap'n. Janae's a big Cap'n Crunch fan. So Suddenly I'm hungry. It. We yeah. did it. Uh. We found it. <laughs> yep. Um, next to Cop in Denver, showing a little boy how it's done in a dance battle. Uh, they both have some pretty sweet moves. Um, Jaden the Youngster. Yeah. They actually go back and forth for quite a while here. They do, and it's, I mean, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Get Let's it, Jaden. Here, Jaden's got, there we go. And Jane has got cool red shoes, so I'm here for it. Yeah, the nod yeah. to Jane and his cool red shoes. Oh. Yeah. Um, and from that to this dad and daughter singing along with Shaka Khan in the car. She is every woman. This is great. And dad is her hype man. Mm -hmm. As every dad should be. Absolutely. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> So adorable. Yeah. She's got some moves too. She's got stage presence. The face is really so solid. into it. Yeah. I'm down with it. <laughs> Hard to get away from that, huh? No, she can't move on from that. All right. Not to cut off Shaka Khan, but yeah. polling website 538 once named Twista. The fastest rapper in the game, which is impressive in its own right, because right. he can spit it. Mm -hmm. But wait until you see what his <laughs> sign language interpreter is able to do to keep up with him, instantly becoming her own overnight it's celebrity. It's very impressive. Take a look at Amber Galloway Galega um, signing alongside Twista at a recent concert. <laughs> video was so impressive that it caught the attention of Guinness World Records, who tweeted that they think Amber should apply to break the record for speediest sign language interpreter. Amber, you may have it. Yeah, she's putting on a show there. Yeah. Good for Amber. If you're ever at a rap concert, right? which I frequent, yeah. as you probably guess, yeah. the, if you, they got a sign language interpreter, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. They're a ton of fun. They get into it, they dance with it. No, it's cool. I, I thought you were being recommend. sarcastic this whole time, but... I was sarcastic about me going to a lot of rap concerts, but okay. the sign language interpreter part is... Yeah. <laughs>
They deserve your respect. Can. Yeah, completely. Okay, finally this morning, we are saying goodbye to a legend, Fog Cam. Ta-ta. The world's oldest webcam due to be shut down at the end of the month. 25 years old? Yeah. San Francisco Fog Cam. That's right. They give you a look at the fog. Back in 94, what you see is what you get. And it's done its job. See you later. Farewell, Fog Cam. <laughs> coming up, instant elopement. We're checking out New York's only after hours wedding chapel. That's coming up after this. So here's what to watch out for today. President Trump is scheduled to speak at the American Veterans Annual National Convention in Louisville, Kentucky, before speaking at a fundraiser committee reception. Democratic presidential hopefuls are on the campaign trail. Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker hold events in Los Angeles, while Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, and many more make their case to voters at the Iowa Federation of Labor Convention. And Loyola, Loyola University basketball superfan Sister Jean, made famous during the school's historic run in the 2018 NCAA tournament turns 100 today. Tune in to the celebration right here on ABC News Live at 4 o'clock Eastern. And the Air Guitar World Championships kick off today in Finland, culminating Friday in the grand finale where imaginary musicians will battle it out to be crowned the best air guitarist on earth. Plus, don't forget to tune into the debrief for an update on all our top stories and the briefing room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. Well, a new study suggests 44% of millennials who rent their apartments have turned down wedding invitations because they're too expensive yeah. to attend these days. They can cost a lot. On average, just being a guest at a wedding costs upwards of 370 bucks. And the other sad news is the same study found that 62% of the time declining that invitation to a friend's wedding costs the guest their friendship with the couple. Then you probably save money on the baby shower too. Mm -hmm. so, long term. It's an investment mm -hmm. you to skip think your of friend's long, wedding. You got to think of long game. Yes, your money management. You know, while traditional weddings are costing more and more, they're expensive, we just told you. One woman here in New York is out to prove you don't have to break the bank to have the ceremony of your dreams. Will Gans went to see if NYC's newest wedding chapel has what it takes to make this the next romance capital of the world. Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan atop the Empire State Building. Shall we? Nicholas Cage and Cher at Lincoln Center. You look beautiful. New York City known for its cinematic romance. We're New Yorkers, we don't have time for this. Welcome to Instant Elopements, New York City's first and only after hours walk in wedding chapel. Donna Marie Sansevero, a.k.a. Rev D, who has officiated almost 400 weddings. My dear friends, we are gathered here today. Is the only one offering a spot to tie the knot in New York City when City Hall is closed. Late into the night and on the weekends. It's the city that never sleeps. How are you the first person to have come up with this idea? I don't know. When my husband and I came up with the idea, we really were just like, oh, this has to exist. And he went on a tear trying to find it somewhere. And he just like, you, babe, you're not going to believe it. It doesn't exist. I was like, really? We can do this. So they did. Viva Los Vegas. Doing the important research, taking a trip to the walk-in wedding capital of the world, Las Vegas. We walked into every single chapel on the strip and off the strip, but we just said, yeah, we, we can do this. And we don't need Elvis. We're in New York City. Who needs Elvis? Vegas, it's more of like a, come on, we got another one. Come on, come on, come on. Not here. Yes, it's going to be a short ceremony, but we are going to make it as personal and as, as, as cozy as we can. It is a nice moment and it should be a nice moment. When clients come in, they have their pick of anything and everything they see in the chapel to make their ceremony a little more personal bouquets and bow ties and a variety of veils. Okay, good morning and welcome. Tanya and Oscar, a couple renewing their vows in honor of their third anniversary, giving their ceremony a bit of a heavy metal flair, something they might have missed out on elsewhere. You have like customization, that's very important, especially, you know, in New York City, that that's not an option. You have to go to City Hall, which we considered at one point. We wanted our wedding to fit us and not do like traditional things. Rev D says most of the folks coming to instant elopements are tourists who didn't realize City Hall isn't open on the weekends. People who just want a smaller, quicker wedding or couples like Oscar and Tanya who never wanted a traditional wedding in the first place. I think that people are gravitating away from traditional weddings because traditional weddings suck. They're boring. I'm sorry, but I want it to be so personal to the couple that people come up to me and afterwards and go, that was so them. 
smart woman we'll talk to. There is an, there's money to be made in that industry. There certainly is, and money to be saved. Full circle. There you go. Perfect. Love That's it from us today. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.